Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Mighty God, exalted one, King of kings and Lord of lords, may your favor rest upon us, go before us, behind us, beside us. Moses, Moses said, if your presence will not go with us, then we will not leave this place. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. Hallelujah. One more time, I want you to turn this song into a prayer. Be the prophet of your destiny tonight. Begin to prophesy over yourself and upon yourself. Lord, your favor goes before me. Many of you, may not realize the power of the favor of God upon a man. He told Mary, thou art highly favored. Thou art highly favored. Are you praying? You're declaring amen. Oh, let it be so, let it be so, let it be so. Let breakthrough be so, let liftings be so, let increase be so, let longevity be so, let influence be so, let power be so. We decree it so. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Are you saying so tonight? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so let the lifted of the lord say so let the glorified of the lord say so scripture says declare ye that thou mightest be justified is someone speaking tonight we declare amen 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 Ah. Oh, let the blessing rest upon me in the name of Jesus. Opening new doors. Let it rest upon me. Let it rest upon this house. Don't be silent. This is part of the meeting. You are creating possibilities over your life. The just lives by his faith. And the righteousness that is of faith speaks. Amen is our language tonight. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Amen. You are this King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, Amen. For thine is, For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Let it be so. Amen. Prophesy. Let increase be so. 
let lifting be so let spiritual fire be so let favor be so Amen. Manda salanda ka produce ka lebre kiki de balaka. Listen, please listen to me. A believer is not just one who has received of the life of God. A believer is one who has been mandated to reveal the glory of God. Comes from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. A manifestation of that glory the Bible says let your light so shine before men he wants them to see John 15 and verse 8 that as they see that light they will glorify God the glory of God is a capture of everything that makes God God his wisdom his wealth his power his presence his anointing everything that makes God God should be revealed so when we say amen we are not just speaking english we are prophesying everything in you that can find expression in me let it find expression if your favor can find expression let it find expression if your wisdom can find expression let it find expression if your power can find expression let it find expression for thine is the kingdom Forever and ever. Amen. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Forever and ever. My prayer for you is Galatians 1 24 very simple but powerful scripture it says and they glorified God in me that when men look at your life you become a living epistle always and they glorified God in me and they glorified God in me let me speak over someone's life here the kind of favor there is a grace that i'm praying for you is from the depth of my heart in the name that is above all names the kinds of favor that will even cause kings to say you are favored may that grace rest upon you now favor at the gates favor in the city favor among kings favor among nobles in the name of jesus take it as a signature upon your life no power in existence can shut the gates of systems and structures over you take this grace work wonders with it in the name of jesus christ our possibilities in this kingdom are predicated upon the kind and the level of grace that is upon us men are defined not just by the colors of their skin not just by their height or physiology exploits in this kingdom among many other factors depend on the grace the investment of the holy spirit that is resident upon the life of a man when the grace of God is upon you, you always will not look like it. Except that your results keep signing that you are it. <laughs> Hallelujah. One prayer point tonight. Holy Spirit, in a mighty way, rest upon my life. Let the beauty, the power, the glory that comes with knowing you, let there be such an evidence, an effulgence, of your grace upon my life lift your voice and pray koinonia all the overflows pray outside pray following online pray
the holy spirit is the beautifier of destinies he's the one given by god to help us without the ministry of the holy spirit we are just actors on stage wasting our time and the time of others but not when the holy spirit is there the bible says now the lord is that spirit now the lord is that spirit now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is he says there is liberty hallelujah thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done the holy spirit was given to us to bring beauty and glory out of our lives it's not a pentecostal phenomenon thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit to Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Let it be a prayer from the depth of your heart. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, we wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, we wait on you, Lord, 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 we wait on you, Dutch, to mature the church in experience, into the bride of christ there are men that ignore you there are others who assume you are not there men have called you several names some have mistaken you for an angel others have called you wind others have called you fire but we know you are the living god the spirit of god And tonight we submit ourselves to your wisdom we submit ourselves to your power we submit ourselves to your ministry you know why we take our time like this to thank god we are not wasting our time we know where he brought us from the bible declares some may trust in horses others chariots but we when you are thoughtful and you have the intelligence to think then you will give him glory unashamedly is a mighty god there is no time spent in worship that is a waste you are bigger than what we say 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 you are bigger than what we say. You are higher than what we say. You are better than what we say. Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome in this place. Oh, there's such a mighty anointing in this place. Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. 
body my soul my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me breathe on me salabalaka sudiada breathe on me breathe on me Open my eyes, Lord. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. We honor you, we reverence you, great spirit of God. The helper of destinies, the maker of men. I want to know you I want to see your face I want to call you Lord I want to touch you I want to hear your voice I want to know you more It's my prayer Lord I want to know you I want to see your face I want to know you more. Holy Spirit may we never be too familiar with your presence in this place we are people you have helped we are people you have shown grace mercy and while the world celebrates us what they see as our achievements we return to you in worship and in awe of your goodness you are the wisdom behind every result in this house it is by your power oh god that we are able to run through a troop indeed it's by your grace that we can leap over walls you have given us a name and a praise even among the nations we return thanks spirit of the living god you are and tonight we have come as a family within this nation and all across the world to learn we have come to see you we have come to encounter your grace we have come to be shifted by your power scripture declares they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the lord even in zion this is zion a house you have so beautified with your glory we thank you oh may the nations learn from us that it is only by the power of the spirit that we excel that by the arm of flesh no man can prevail some trust in horses others chariots but there is a generation that trusts in the name of our god by our worship oh god may we mentor nations may we mentor kings may we teach them the excellency of a relationship with you tonight oh god be lifted in and through our lives in Jesus name Amen. blessings to you again please be seated 
hallelujah amen tonight we're going to be praying but then we're going to be dealing with a subject that is so personal and so dear to me we're going to be exploring the subject of the Holy Spirit and in every generation it seems like there are a few people who seem to come into a level of relationship and union with this strange ancient spirit and by whatever means when they do come into that relationship some of them unlearned people some of them weak people relegated to the backside but it seemed as though when they met this personality regardless their sociological orientations he seemed to have lifted them to very strange levels of impact and then you find out that when they leave it looks like there is a decline in the understanding of his person again and then once and again he will find someone else who he will use as a specimen to show the nations who he is and what he is able to do oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Please, I'd like you to be sensitive as I teach. We're discussing the Holy Spirit here. Many of you will be introduced to realms and dimensions in the Spirit tonight that will surprise you. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Living God. I started my journey with God not looking for fame, not looking for power, not looking for ministry. It was a blind but sincere pursuit that if there was more in God then peradventure my life could be a revelation of that more even to a generation I went to church and I found out that while preachers preach they preach powerful messages and whilst they were preaching I saw sick people whilst they were preaching I saw confused people oppressed people and yet they opened scripture they spoke so intelligently about the love of god they spoke so articulately about the power of god his power to heal his power to deliver the lord i'm bringing you closer I am bringing you closer i'm drawing you to deeper levels with me i am drawing you to deeper levels with me i am drawing you to deeper levels with me and when they shared the grace I saw sick people walking back sick we ended the average church service like this may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ we said then we said the love of God the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and we confessed that it should rest and abide with us and yet people walked as though they were leaving a funeral where was the power where was the grace 
I saw how people prayed begging God to show up the more I read my Bible I became confused someone is missing something somewhere I had encounters that I could not explain I had the opportunity to meet a few well-meaning sincere veterans of the gospel I asked them questions about the Holy Spirit they waved it with some theological answers and I said no no let me tell you one of the ways that God draws you into intimacy he will reveal a dimension of himself to you and hide it back he hides it back so that you will begin to seek him the dimension he hides back is a realm he wants to become your habitation but he hides it so that you will prove your pursuit your hunger and I began to pray I said Lord there has to be men and women who don't just talk about spiritual things but are able to demonstrate it with their lives then I picked a book one day called God's generals when I picked that book and I opened it I could not close it again it was as though I was reading about my relatives I said this is it this is what I've been trying to ask this is what I've been trying to seek men who subdued kingdoms shut the mouth of lions they live like gods upon the earth then I began to study the history of the church in Nigeria and I came across strange men like Archbishop Benson Idahosa men who shook this nation not another nation i read about men like apostle babalola men who carried power with god and i said something is wrong with your body oh god when did we reduce the power of god and the ministry of the holy spirit to a theological dissertation where did we hide the demonstration of his power we call it the house of god we claim that god is there and yet people come and they are not changed and when the call of god came upon my life i said lord do not send me without me knowing the holy spirit what will be my my message to this arrogant world when I stand before kings and nobles, who will I tell them, send me? And that began my journey, my pursuit, that desperate search for the person of the Holy Spirit. I heard men like Benny Hinn talk about him. Benny Hinn would stand on stage and talk how that Catherine Kuhlman would say do not grieve my friend and sob on the stage where was that passion where did it go today we have written books about him and yet we do not know him we have organized conferences after his name yet we do not know him we have packed crusade grounds and we're utterly disappointed and revealed from our flaws the disconnect as far as our relationship is with him to the point where we do not even know his power again when we see him move we are not sure if he's the one and yet I read from scripture and I studied from history that he was the force behind the enviable liftings of men. The force behind the rising of people. He was the one who lifted politicians like Daniel, lifted men like Joseph, empowered women like Mary, strengthened men like Elijah. How would we want a great destiny ignoring his ministry? and his person 
listen to me god did not give us a religion it was an experience it still is an experience introducing to us this personality that has been so misunderstood we call him oil he's not oil we call him a bird he's not a bird we call him wind he's not wind we call him fire he's not fire he's the holy ghost the spirit of the living god he's the holy ghost scepter of the king of kings he's the holy ghost seal of the age to come is changing everything tonight swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little dear then your day will dawn he's at work in you changing everything in obedience to Christ let's sit down if you can the Holy Spirit he is called who is he why is he so important that Jesus had to wait for his arrival to begin his ministry Jesus the logos of god remained so important until he arrived having mentored his disciples over a period of three and a half years he says tarry tarry do not use zeal to start tarry until he comes he is so important wait until he comes I pray we are able to teach tonight. There is such a strong atmosphere of his presence. God is introducing many of you afresh into the ministry. It's like an initiation. Because there are many of you, the call of God is upon your life. Oh yes, there are many of you, the call of God is upon your life. There is a generation that must seek the face of the God of Jacob. The call of God is upon your life. You may not look like it, but I tell you there is a call of God. You are the answer to the age-long prayer of mothers, the fasting of mothers. Can you find someone that you will use from this family? And his hand has been trailing you for years. Now he's found you. And for those of you watching and following this is not some pentecostal jamboree this is the spirit of the living god stirring up a move we listen you see you will not know what is happening to you now till you get out of this place and then you begin to see doors open in ways you cannot explain doors you have tried politically to open and it did not open by the connections of men when the holy ghost steps in it does not waste your time people are not just falling down and shouting there is a recreation happening over destinies there there are alignments happening perhaps some of you are in ministry here no power no grace you struggle no nothing it's because you are just doing ministry just from a book produced by zondervan respectfully speaking let him come and back you and you will watch the wonder working power of the spirit of god you've done business on your own but let him come and hold your hands and you watch the frequency the grace We are all ordinary except that when he comes to us 
when he comes with us we become instruments of marvel and wonder first to ourselves then to all and sundry please be seated if you can just help those under the anointing don't worry you know you met him oppressions just living just like that yokes that cannot stand his presence just living just like that covenants ordinances speakings that men have vowed that provided you are from this lineage you cannot rise who shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass when the lord himself has not said so satan only looks as powerful as the absence of the holy spirit makes it for the light shineth in darkness john 1 5 and the darkness comprehended it not before i get into the word let me speak to you if you are sick in your body here i stretch my hands right now fibroids every devil of oppression i stretch my hands be healed now be healed now i bring you the life and the glory of heaven help them please be healed now high blood pressure goes down now every kind of medical diagnosis we bring it under the influence of the spirit in the name of jesus christ every organ malfunctioning we declare a correction now and for every missing organ we declare creation of a new one now pain around the limbs be healed right now any genotype problems blood group problems we change it now in the name of jesus and any altar that has refused to let you go no matter how long in the name of jesus we scatter those altars we scatter those kapakatos katia we scatter those altars let god's people go altars of delay oppression by the power of the holy spirit keeping families down keeping destinies down keeping businesses down abuja hear the word of the lord nigeria hear the word of the lord we come by the rod of a higher priesthood let god's people go now every gate that will not open for you we not only open it we scatter it so that your children can pass we scatter it in the name of jesus christ gates of stagnation gates of shame and reproach be scattered in the name of jesus open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray we scatter this gate by the power that raised christ from the dead we come by the agency of the spirit and we make declarations of power hallelujah listen please listen before you sit down i need to tell you this i made a covenant with god that there is nobody who will ever come for one koinonia service and sit down and share the grace and say i wasted my time no for as long as i am breathing and for as long as god gives me the privilege to represent him through this platform 
if you ever find your way here and sit down here i assure you the things that will change in your life in one single service will surprise you it is not pride we speak as touching the grace he has given it is wickedness and even evil to keep you here for hours and those following online waste your time and just share the grace no sir it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted lifted above all the mountains and other hills and nations shall flow to it they will say to one another come let us go to the mount of the lord the house of jacob he will teach us his ways the bible says we have not only come to learn we have come to experience please be seated if you can again let's see how far the lord can help us tonight anyone under the anointing close to you whilst i teach whether you are an usher or not just help them we glorify you O oh god in jesus name let's spend a few minutes teaching the word and then we'll pray we are a people who embrace the ministry of the holy spirit in his entirety but we are also a people who have profound honor and value for the word of god acts chapter 20 and verse 32 acts 20 32 and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace the bible says which is able to number one build you up it is only the word of god that is able to build men number two to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified the bible says and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation hallelujah when we invest time learning the word we are learning the modus operandi of the kingdom we are allowing the mind of christ philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 it says let this mind be in you permit this mind this thinking this ideology to be in you which was also in christ jesus the word of god gives us enlightenment spiritual illumination access to light and john 1 5 says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not he said that was the true light that lighted every man hallelujah he came to bear witness to the light john 1 verse 6 there was a man the bible says sent from god whose name was john next verse says the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through his witness might believe verse 8 he says he was not that light he was only sent to bear witness of that light nine says that was the true light jesus by the ministry of the holy spirit the light that lighted every man his ministry is for every man not just church people every man are we blessed now let me just give a little theological background theologically speaking there are certain words you've heard me say it again that there are certain words that even though used in the christian faith are not found verbatim in scripture there are a number of them we use them as a lingua franca among believers but then these are not words that are captured in scripture one of it is the word rapture you will not find any word rapture in scripture are we together but then we know that there is an event that we call rapture praise the name of the lord another word is trinity you never 
find oh by the way let's bless azaria family they are following right now let's give them a big 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 god bless you hallelujah praise the name of the lord so the word trinity because before i begin to talk about the holy spirit i need to clear the air over an issue that has remained for very long in the body of christ the confusion as to the triune nature of god it's been a confusion among believers among bible scholars there have been different schools of thought as to the triune nature of god the bible says hear o israel the lord our god is one lord and so many people have used that scripture to negate the existence of divinity in a tripartite form are we together it seems as though there are three gods the father the son and the holy spirit which one do we worship which one do we serve and it's brought a lot of confusion so when we teach about the ministry of the holy spirit there is further confusion again if this is not clear and the reason is because the holy spirit happens to be largely invisible and there has been no direct revelation of his form in terms of his human form are we together but then let me just take two or three minutes to let you know that the concept of the triune nature of god is a fact the bible does tell us that even though god is the god of the universe his operation is tripartite the father the son and the holy spirit this is a foundational understanding to the christian faith if you do not believe this something might be wrong with your conviction are we together now that it is true that the father the son and the holy spirit we call it the godhead the word one god does not mean a singular it means unity hear ye o israel the lord our god is one lord united is that true genesis chapter one let's go to the book of the beginnings now theologically speaking every time you want to examine a body of spiritual truth a subject um you begin your study from there's what we call the law of first mention so you go to scripture and then the context with which that word was mentioned first is the context that guides you as you study that subject are we together so we go to the book of beginnings genesis chapter one in the beginning the bible says god god created the heaven and the earth verse two it says and the earth was without form and void now you would notice um let me not assume genesis 1 verse 1 and genesis 1 verse 2 it seems like a contrast because according to the character of god's creation everything he creates is good is that true now we see that god created the heavens and the earth verse 1 and then verse 2 now says the earth was without form again so what was god creating the earth was without form void darkness was upon the face of the deep the hebrew expression tohu wa bohu confusion and chaos and then the bible says please go to verse 2 just keep it there verse 2 it says and the spirit of god so we see that the first the first dimension of the godhead revealed in scripture was the holy spirit and he was called the spirit of god he moved upon the face of the waters just for knowledge genesis 1 verse 2 came as a result of the judgment of lucifer right genesis 1 verse 1 and genesis 1 verse 2 did not just happen within a short time span now you know that the bible is a piece of literature and it was written uh, with with honor to all the principles of literature meaning that it was written largely in summary are we together now you would think that it just happened again and again there were prophets in the bible that never met themselves they were hundreds of years apart but when you read them because you are reading a summary it looked like one just died and next week the other one started no hallelujah so lucifer was judged in genesis 1 verse 1 
God created the heavens and the earth. And then the gap between Genesis 1 verse 1, 1 verse 2 in theology is called the gap theory. It's an attempt to explain what happened the hundreds of years apart that would have led to this chaos and confusion. Because Genesis 1 verse 2 is not an expression of the character of God outside of the influence of another deity. The earth being dark and formless was as a result of the judgment. So what you call creation story in Genesis chapter 1 is actually a re-creation story. That was not the original creation. Are we together? Job, in the height of his frustration, when you read chapter 38, I'm just giving us an introduction, just a background. In chapter 38, Job was so frustrated because of his predicaments. The Bible says he summoned God and God came to him in a whirlwind and said, Who is this that dark not counsel without knowledge? He says, Gird your loins as a man and I would demand of you. Answer me. Question one. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? So there was a day the foundations of the earth was laid. We don't see that in the Genesis account. Are we together now? It says, declare if thou hast understanding. Verse 2. It says, who had laid the measure thereof, if thou knowest. In fact, let me tell you this for your knowledge. I hope you realize that what we call the Garden of Eden, the Garden of the Lord, that we call Eden, where Adam and Eve, the east side of the Eden, was where they were kept. The first occupant, according to the revelation that scripture brings, in the Garden of Eden, was Lucifer himself. Thou was in Eden, the garden of the Lord. You now see the vendetta between Lucifer and man. Because Lucifer was an expression of God to the then creation. The word eternity means the formation of infinite dispensations. We are not the first of the human race. No, we are just a little above 6,000 years. Science show us the existence of a lot of humanoid species before us. There's nothing, um, there's nothing false about it. Adam, hmm, understand what I'm saying now. I'm teaching koinonia and then those who are interested in learning through this platform. I know why I'm saying what I just said now. Adam is not the first man. No. Adam was the first man created in the image There was a dispensation where Lucifer was head over them. He was a representation. What Adam, what God brought man to do. There was a dispensation that Lucifer was mandated to be the revelation of God to them. And on account of that assignment, he's making angels, cherubs, were not made from dust. They were made from quantized light. Light, the depreciation of their body but the degree to which the light upon them excels. That is the degree to which they have visited the throne room. Because every time they meet him, it's a law to both human and angels that as we behold him, we are changed. Are we together now? Yes. So, Lucifer, it was on the strength of his build-up, the dexterity of his making, that pride came upon him are we together yes there's no time to begin to talk about lucifer lucifer was that cherub the bible says that covereth he was in eden the garden of the lord the entire object of his making was he was he was an artistry of god and his assignment was the custodian the light bearer revelations are stored as light and that was his office the son of the morning. On account of the revelations of God that he had, he built pride and said, do you know what? If this is all that makes God God, then I have the secrets to be God. I will exalt myself above the stars of God, he said. I will be like the most high. Treason was found in him. He wanted to run a parallel government so you can choose either God or him. And there was war in heaven. Now, don't downplay the level of Lucifer's intelligence. Even in heaven, he deceived one third of the angels. Wow. What would he have told them that made one third of the angels to literally leave their original estate 
the bible says and there was judgment in heaven michael the archangel you see that they met again over the body of moses you again they met michael said don't waste my time the lord rebuke you so now it was the judgment that came as a result of the fall of lucifer when you read the book of revelations it says woe to the inhabitants of the earth for lucifer that great dragon has been cast into the earth he has come with anger and fury that's why uncontrolled anger is the most classic proof that there is a spirit manipulating you yes sir lucifer came down to the earth with anger and he was hovering around the face of the waters it was the judgment of lucifer that led to genesis 1 verse 2 do you understand now so genesis 1 verse 3 is god now bringing light what light this was not sunlight i hope you know sunlight was created in day four this was the light that the life-giving factor of creation he withdrew it in the judgment of lucifer and so now god said light be that's the original hebrew rendition light be and there was light and then he began to create everything and he saw that it was good and so on and so forth and then when we get to genesis chapter 1 verse 26 this is the first classic expression that proves the triune nature of god and god said let us let us so this was this was a parliament there was a meeting going on not let me let us but this does not automatically tell you whether there are three there could be ten let us so how do we know that it is the father the son and the holy spirit are we learning next scripture very quickly matthew chapter 3 please from verse 14 this is the baptism of jesus now look up please a little background again about jesus i hope you know that jesus came to the earth for many reasons principally to be a mediator to bring many sons into glory are we together he came and as, and as an expression of the love of the father this was revealed through his substitutionary sacrifice to the end that whosoever believes in him that report might receive the life of god in the flesh to show us that it was possible to live a victorious life the third reason why he came was to become a marking script a correction over our perceptions about god because until jesus came there were many things about god that people did not know they did not have the rich um opportunity to enjoy the ministry of the holy spirit to the degree to which we enjoy he would come upon them and then go away he did not have a permanent residence within them so they credited all kinds of things to god jesus came as god's manual god's reference point so that everything you thought god did or was you looked at the life of jesus to correct your orientation are we together now matthew chapter 3 please thank you jesus is someone learning but john forbade him saying this was jesus at the baptism now i have need to be baptized of thee and thou comest to me and jesus answering said unto him suffer it to be so now for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness then he allowed him next verse now watch this and jesus the logos of god john 1 1 remember in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god the same was with god so we see two there the word and god the same was with god even though he was god also now the bible says and jesus so we see that jesus was there when he was baptized he went straight out of the water and lo the heavens were open and he saw the spirit of god are you seeing now so this is jesus walking on earth in the flesh the heavens open and the holy spirit descending upon him lightning upon him like a dove 17 and then a voice which is not the holy spirit this is jesus on earth this is the holy spirit coming and another third voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son whoever calls him father what should be his name whoever calls jesus son must be jesus proved that he was father when he called jesus i mean uh, god proved that he was father when he called jesus 
so jesus the word the spirit of the living god the father one last proof in the mouth of two or three witnesses a matter is established matthew 28 the great commission from verse 18 matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth next verse go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of this is jesus talking now baptizing them in the name of the father of the son of the holy ghost he didn't mention any fourth person so we know from the mouth of jesus that the godhead is trinity jesus himself spoke are you ready for one last proof acts chapter 7 this was the matthias stephen about to be stoned acts chapter 7 from verse 54 please acts chapter 7 don't be tired of learning scripture it gives you accuracy of understanding and then you are able to walk in the reality of the power and the grace of god on the strength of the spiritual illumination you have it says when they had heard these things they were caught to the heart and gnashed when they heard these things they were caught to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth verse 55 now the bible says but he stephen now being full of the holy ghost so who was in stephen the holy spirit he looked steadfastly into heaven what did he see the glory of god and then jesus standing at the right hand so we see the holy spirit in stephen god manifesting in his glory the father and the son standing at his right hand why am i saying this thing so that you will believe from scripture not from opinion not from charismatism from scripture if your confidence is just based on what someone said it would dwindle with time but when your faith is anchored on scripture it becomes unbending you become immovable are we together now now the word spirit comes from the latin word spiritus it means breath spiritus s p i s numa all mean the same thing these are expressions of spirit are we together so a spirit typically speaking um generally it just means the life-giving factor of anything the life-giving factor of anything is the spirit of that thing are we together Gener who is the holy spirit number one the holy spirit is god acts chapter 5 from verse 3 to 4 please the holy spirit is god this was the story of ananias and sapphira we're proving that the holy spirit is not just an archangel there are many well-meaning sincere people who have carried teachings all around the holy spirit is not an archangel the holy spirit is not a man the holy spirit is god in every way he's not junior to god he's not one of the errant people in heaven he is god in every way but peter said ananias why has satan filled thy heart to lie to the holy ghost are you saying that now and to keep back part of the price of the land verse 4 whilst it remained was it not thine after it was sold was it not in thine own power why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart thou hast not lied to men but to god peter now says you have lied to the holy ghost and then you have lied to god the holy ghost is god in every way number two very quickly who is the holy spirit the holy spirit is the manifestation of the presence and the power of god the holy spirit is the manifestation of the presence and the power of god he is not just the manifestation he is the revealer of the presence and the power of god the holy spirit benny Hinn calls him the unlimited presence of jesus how true based on scripture 
he gives omnipotence to the presence of he could only be in one location at a time but now the holy spirit has come to multiply the influence of jesus across the earth he is the continuation of the ministry of jesus but now not just localized to one man he can be everywhere at the same time so the holy spirit is a revealer he is also the manifestation of the presence of god are we learning this is very very important number three very quickly who is the holy spirit the bible calls the holy spirit the wisdom of god this is very powerful wisdom the wisdom of god isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2 isaiah 11 and verse 2 and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him he says the spirit of wisdom the holy spirit is called the spirit of wisdom that means he is the life-giving force behind every manifestation of divine wisdom there are three levels of wisdom as the bible teaches there is wisdom that comes from above that is first pure there is wisdom that is scientific sophia that comes with experimentation and experience there is wisdom that is diabolical and demonic the wisdom we are talking about is wisdom that comes from above are we together the spirit of wisdom ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 paul is praying now ephesians 1 and verse 17 that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom so the holy spirit is called the spirit of wisdom next point who is the holy spirit this is a very very important point i'm about to bring about the holy spirit the holy spirit is the author of scripture the holy spirit is the authentic author of scripture not just paul not just david the psalmist not just matthew mark luke and john the holy spirit is the author of scripture second peter chapter 1 please and verse 21 second peter chapter 1 and verse 21 second peter 1 21 hallelujah you can't find it go to second timothy chapter 3 from verse 15 second timothy 3 from verse 15 and that from it child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make thee wise unto salvation listen carefully through faith which is in jesus christ next verse it says all scripture how many all scripture old testament the gospel acts of the apostles the epistles revelation all scripture is given by inspiration of god by inspiration of god is profitable for doctrine reproof correction instruction in righteousness verse 16 it says 17 now that the man of god may be mature and furnished unto all good works i don't know why they didn't find second peter is a mistake from me it says holy men wrote as they were inspired of the spirit so holy men only did the writing the author was god how many of you have seen people who translate the messages of others into books the translators cannot say the book is their own is that true the original person thank you second peter 1 21 for prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man but holy men spake as they were moved by the holy ghost if you help me transcribe my thoughts into a book you will be rewarded for your intelligence but the creativity and the intellectual property remains my own is that true so who really is the author of scripture no it can't be peter it can't be john they were moved by the holy spirit why is this important because if you ignore the holy spirit in an attempt to learn scripture you will end up in error listen carefully the source of error the real source of error 
is to just be scientific about the bible and ignore the person of the holy spirit in as much as the bible is truly an archaeological book a historical book a piece of literature but it is empowered with mysteries that only the author can unravel if the holy spirit does not assist you in opening scripture then you find out that you'll be reading history you'll be reading archaeology you'll be reading literature poetry and not have the requisite level of edification that comes with this this book is both closed and sealed you can open it but only the holy spirit can unlock the seals are we together the holy spirit is the author of scripture that means the next time you open your bible to study the publishers of this book were not the authors of the book they only made it available to us holy spirit you are the author of scripture open my eyes and you will be surprised at the things that you will see it says open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from out of thy law is god blessing us the holy spirit is the author of scripture now the holy spirit was revealed in the old testament like we know he came upon great men and women to do exploits but the character of his manifestation listen carefully you would notice that there was hardly a description of deep intimacy and fellowship with the holy spirit in fact the person who came closest as far as relationship with the holy spirit is concerned was david the man david cast me not away from your presence he said take not your spirit from me are we together but generally speaking the holy spirit would come upon men in the old testament prophets priests kings and then he would perform something supernatural through them and return back so they knew his power but they did not have the opportunity to know and learn the holy spirit in a very intimate way they experienced the power of the holy spirit but they did not have the privilege of what we call today koinonia the fellowship of the spirit hallelujah are we still together christianity becomes a religion if and when the ministry of the holy spirit is ignored it is the presence and the ministry of the holy spirit in this faith work that gives excitement to this adventure he is responsible for the exploits that men and women command in this kingdom write this down please it was the holy spirit who birthed the church romans chapter 8 and verse 15 you also find that in acts chapter 2 from verse 1 the holy spirit was the one who birthed the church the bible says for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby as a family we can now cry abba father he brought us into this family acts chapter 2 and verse 1 when you read the bible says when the day of pentecost was fully come they were gathered together in one accord suddenly verse 2 there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty a russian mighty wind it filled the house where they were sitting there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire and it came and sat on each of them aha uh -huh. verse 4 the bible says and they were filled with the holy ghost so the holy ghost birthed the church and if the church ignores him today then we'll become something else aside the church are we together we must bring back to our consciousness the person and the ministry of the holy spirit beyond religion beyond the fivefold let me tell you this the holy spirit is not a privilege of men and women of god in the gospel no the holy spirit is for everyone he's not just for pastors apostles prophet lever an unbeliever and creation generally speaking it's more than just the salvation experience as you'll be learning shortly are we together praise the name of the lord because for many people the moment you begin to talk of the ministry of the holy spirit here's what they tell you i'm not called into ministry just leave me i'm a businessman i will keep giving you money while you keep knowing him and go and do your crusade there show us the ancient path will you lead us along 
We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to end. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your